applause for yourselves. And, um, well, unfortunately, the Nijam Education Center had to leave us, and they're not here with us. So for today, we have just four schools, Anglican Girls Grammar School, Ito One Girls Grammar School, New Era, and Ilia College, all to compete for the prizes. Well, a round of, uh, well, a round of applause for yourselves again for our amazing job so far. Now, just a quick reminder, the aim of the competition is still to improve communicative skills in students, as well as broaden their knowledge on particular issues. And the theme for this season is governance and politics. And so let's go on a very short break. And when we come back, I'll do a quick reintroduction of the judges. And then let's watch the update so far, because it's been an amazing competition. So, watch out for the update. Democracy was derived from two Greek words, demo and kratia. Demo means people, kratia means the government. Therefore, democracy is the government of the people, of the common people. It is obvious that democracy is and always will be the best form of government. The idea of godfatherism is for first and foremost mentorship. Secondly, it for guidance. Thirdly, for benevolence. Fourthly, for counseling and sponsorship. What is it? Tribalism and religious disputes. Godfatherism is also responsible for the distorting of effective political parties. Ethic adequate step without godfathers. Democracy cannot run smoothly. Godfatherism. Welcome back, lovers of education. It is to the Advanced Teams School Debate Competition brought to you by TSL Nigeria TV. Like I said, it's been a top competition so far. Now to do a quick reintroduction of our amiable judges. Our first judge for today is no other than Mr. Fares Okwere, who's the director of New Media at Doe State PDP and a social media influencer. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you. And then our beautiful damsel on the studio. At the studio, we have Miss Amafe Jessica, who's an advocate for good governance and a political analyst. A round of applause for her, please. And then Mr. Jack Obinya, who's a social media influencer, the chief editor of OB360 Media. A round of applause for him. We have Mr. Albert Obaze, who's a social media influencer as well. A round of applause for him, please. And last but not least, we have our observer on the set. We have Mr. No, Reverend Olu Martin, who is going to be our observer for today. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you. Now, before we go straight to the um, candidates, before we go straight to the debate, we'd like to have an address from one of the judges who's going to educate them on the criteria they're scoring them with. So without further ado, I invite Mr. Jack Obinia to give them an address. A round of applause as he comes in. So thank you very much for yeah, um, coming today and for taking note in particular of the what we addressed last week, which was uh, punctuality. I can see that um, you've all taken it very seriously, and that's uh, going to be a plus for all of you today. Yeah. So now, um, just to reiterate uh, what um, the presenters have said to you, um, our criteria is very clear. It, it, you know, it has to do with organization and clarity. Um, we're going to be taking note of that, how you give your viewpoints and uh, responses, outline both clearly and orderly, um, use of arguments, you have to give facts, you have to state your facts, you have to state your points, what, you know, to back the points you've given, yeah? Um, the use of examples has to also be taken note of, you have to, you know, we're going to take note of your use of examples, we're also going to take note of your use of rebuttal, all these Take, have points. I mean, your clear expression of, like they said, uh, uh, you know, to improve communication skills and knowledge. So we're going to be taking, using that, all these to take note of the points here. Yeah? Another thing is your presentation and style. We are also going to be taking note of that. Yeah. So, and one more thing that's also very important for us is keeping to time. While you're saying all this, you don't need to. Um, want to say everything to the end and then you, it's time out and then you're not able to, to meet up with time. So it's very important for us. I wish you all the best and uh, may the best three get to the grand finale next week. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Jack, for that amazing address. Now I'm just going to go on to call the first speaker for today, who is our speaker from Anglican Girls Grammar School. Let's have Faith Nosamudiana. Please a round of applause as she comes up. The moderator, panel of judges, and all other protocol observed, good day. My name is Egerawa Faith Nosamudiana. I am a student of Anglican Girls Grammar School. I am here to support the motion that says electronic voting is a solution to election regain in Nigeria. What is electronic voting? Electronic voting is the type of voting that involves the use of electronic means like the phones, internet, and private computer networks, in the, which is used the, to aid counting and casting of votes. Today, the use of internet is increasing every day, especially in communication and banking. A few weeks ago, the world saw the general election of the South Africa, where e-voting was used. And it was good. And the results were positive. So I am here to say that, indeed, electronic voting is a solution to election rigging in Nigeria with the following points of mind. One, ability to vote from anywhere and at any time. At any voting, all you have to do is assess your internet connection and vote, no matter where you are. We don't have to go to a specific place, queue in a line, and vote in ballot buses. In electronic voting, there is no chance for snatching of ballot buses, influence from politicians to, before you vote. There is no chance for victimization and intimidation from political le leaders. We are all safe because we vote from wherever we like. We don't need to do as they please, but we do as we please because they have no chance to come and meet us, to come and address us, to come and change our mind from the positive view we already have. That leads me to my, for example, in the last presidential election, 2019, there were so many, many deaths. In Nasarawa State, a youth couple was stabbed during election, but in e-voting, all these abnormalities do not happen. It does not occur. In e voting, even disabled are able to vote without the help of third party and without stress. That leads me to my second point. It is an independent platform and device. In e voting, we use our smart most smartphones to vote. And as many as the numbers of people that vote, it is showed in the platform. It cannot be manipulated. It cannot be increased or decreased. Also, favor one particular party instead of another. But it is straightforward. It is reliable. And it is almost perfect. But it is not so in the present system that we used to vote in Nigeria, where people are dying in every election, where there are always cries, where children, youth, and youth couples that have bright futures, see no, the light, they don't see the light of the day. But all this does not happen in electronic voting. In electronic voting, even the disabled are able to vote. In electronic voting, we are independent. In electronic voting, we are reliable. It is efficient and eff effective. In electronic voting, it saves costs. It saves life. In electronic voting, people come out and vote because they know they are, have no fear when it comes to voting. Thank you. That was a good one from Anglican Girls Grammar School. A very beautiful argument. Now I'm just going to call on the speaker from New Era Secondary School, Precious Odaro. And now the debate topic is e-voting, that is electronic voting. Is it a solution to election rigging in Nigeria? Not just in Nigeria, worldwide or not? Now the speakers will be arguing for and against the motion. Now let's have a speaker from New Era, please. A round of applause as she comes on. Precious Odaro. Thank you. The promise of electronic voting for fortunate and democratic culture has been eroded globally in recent times. Globally, electronic voting has become a well exercising future in Nigeria. With this, I say, good day, Honorable Mr. Moderator, impartial panel of judges, accurate time keeper, court baiters, and my listeners. My name is Precious Odaru. I'm a bona fide student of New Era College, Benin City. I'm here to support the motion which says electronic voting is a solution to election rigging. Before I keep the ball rolling, I will first of all defend electronic voting and election rigging. Electronic voting simply means an election system in which the voters are allowed to use electronic tools and processes in casting, transmitting, and counting of votes. Where election we can first was an electoral malpractice committed to corrupt committed to corrupt and fraudulent intention to influence an election in favor of a candidate. Historical evidence exists in our borders to buttress this point that we all know today as election winking, which has been in existence since the 1965 Western Region election. Electronic voting carries an important implication for empowerment and safe 
and safe medication. It is a way of promoting voters' participation, boost donors, and modernize voting processes. In Nigeria, when electronic voting was used in the 2015 general election, it was discovered to have drastically reduced the minutes of election rigging. This was because these voters were first verified by the smart card reader before he or she is allowed to vote. Electronic voting has really curbed the inflation of illegal voters' number and illegal voting. Falsification of results was also made impossible with the introduction of a central server system in which, in which election result is slightly transferred into the central server at the end of the poll. This result must also tally a number as captured by the smart card reader. Is this not a milestone in the Nigeria electoral process? I leave that question for my opponent to answer. In the 2019 general election conducted in Nigeria, we had little or no cases of ballot bus nurturing, intimidation of voters, thuggery, etc. This was made possible with the introduction of electronic voting. The plant and ringing of the Western Region election, Bear Chief Samuel Akintola of the Nigerian National Democratic Party wouldn't be made possible with electronic voting. So electronic voting has really been a solution to election ringing. I know my opponents may come up here and say that electronic voting is not a solution to election ringing. How come the damn governor of Edo State, Adam Tali Oshomole, got his mandate back after being initially ringed out? Was it not by forensic verification, which is the application of technology in the electoral process? I think I will also leave that question for my opponents to answer. However, in conclusion, Nigeria has remained underdeveloped because of the traditional process used in voting, which is, which is manned with election ringing. But I confidently put it up to you, my opponent, that electronic voting is a solution to election rigging. Thank you. Wow, an amazing, amazing argument from New Era. That was so good. Now let's have our speaker from Ito and Girls Grammar School, Friday, Sandra. Please a round of applause. Good day, the organizers of this program, the moderator, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, my co-debaters and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am Friday Sandra Osunobo, a student of Ito and Girls Grammar School, and I'm here to oppose the motion which states that electronic voting is a solution to rigging in Nigeria. Before I proceed, it is pertinent to define electronic voting, otherwise known as e-voting. Electronic voting is the process of casting and counting votes through machine. I would like to agree with Femi Falana, a Nigerian human rights activist who said that electronic voting is not a solution to rigging in Nigeria because with the state of impunity and recklessness in this country, whereby greedy and party politicians stop at nothing in order to win an election, thus electronic voting will not put a stone on their way. That is why the election petition tribunal is investigating what is now called e-rigging. Atiku versus Buhari is a case in point. Up to now, the case is still being investigated in the court of appeal. Secondly, it will interest you to know that a technologically advanced country like Germany banned e-voting in the year 2001 as the system lacks transparency, credibility, and it is with a lot of complexities. There is no proof that electronic voting is a solution to rigging, as the technology is prone to so many misuse, including hackers. Yes, my opponent may say that it speed up the process of voting, sorting, counting, and collations of votes, but just in the same way, it can speed up the process of escalation or inflating counts. By merely pressing a dumb number like zero, votes can reach from 10,000 to 100,000, from 100,000 to 1 million, and so on. So to say, figures escalate easily beyond measure. Let you wonder then we have a outrageous number of vote casts in the northern part of Nigeria. Please don't laugh. Finally, I submit to this house that electronic voting is not a solution to rigging in Nigeria, as it is more of an attitudinal problem on the part of our politicians who are bent on winning elections. And so, buying over the INEC chairman and his crew, election results can be modified, falsified or escalated in favor of whosoever has bought them over. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. These students are not playing. They came prepared. Now I'm just going to call on our last speaker from EDIA College, Emanuela Matthew. Please come on. Around the floor. Good day, moderator, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, co debaters, and the audience. Standing before you is Matthew Manuela, a bond fire student of the Great Idea College. I'm here to oppose the existing motion, which states that electronic voting is a solution to election rigging in Nigeria. First and foremost, electronic voting can be defined as when a voter casts a vote through a digital means instead of on a paper. From the above definition, you will understand that bringing electronic voting to Nigeria is more like saying that voting is not for everyone, but rather just for those who are computer literate. 
illiterate. In other words, those in the rural area where electronic gadgets are rarely used will be de de um, deprived of their fundamental right of voting simply because they don't know how to use electronic gadget. Because I hope you don't expect an old woman like my grandmother who can't use a touch phone perfectly to come and learn how to use a computer simply because she wants to vote. Secondly, considering training the citizens on how to use this equipment will be a total waste of money, starting with the fact that most Nigerians will complain of the time and energy consumption. That leads me to my third point. Nigeria lack the basic requirement for electronic voting. In a country like Nigeria, where we don't even have stable power supply, you are talking of e-voting. What will be the fate of Nigerians when election is going on and there is power failure? Nigerian thinking of electronic voting is like a child trying to jump where he or she has not learned how to work. That leads me to, to my fourth point. Electronic, which was indeed amusing to hear my first speaker say electronic voting will encourage transparency, which she is placed as snatching of ballot bursts. Do you know that in a normal balloting system, your votes are collated right in the polling unit, where you can see how the votes are counted, but in electronic voting, all you do is you just press a button. You don't know how the votes are collated, and that makes it easy for the, the results to be manipulated. Fifthly, electronic voting encourages bribery and electoral malpractice. In a normal ballot system, you have over 72 INEC officials, which include the 36 INEC heads of state, the vice chancellors, and the national INEC chairman. Now, going around to bribe these people will be a total lot of stress to the candidates. But in a normal end, if voting, you have just, where it's more like a contract deal, you have just one company to bribe. And all you need to do is to go and meet the, the boss of that company, bribe him, and he will help you do the job with his counterpart. In conclusion, electronic voting will lead to increased rates of unemployment, which will later result to high rates of crime in Nigeria. Reason being that by the time these computers are brought to Nigeria, all, almost all INEC officials, if not all, will be sacked and replaced with a computer, thereby reducing their standard of living and increasing the rate of poverty in Nigeria. My great people of Nigeria, let's forget about e-voting and focus on how we can improve our normal ballot system because it's simply the best. Thank you. Wow. These students are on fire. You know, at a point I was convinced that this is the solution, and now I'm convinced that it is not. In fact, I'm confused. Let's leave the judges to have that job for today. I know the, ju the, the job is really tough, but you have it for today. Now we're just going to go on a very short break, and when we come back, we'll just allow our judges the time to carefully compile the scores. Hmm, when we come back, it is the moment of truth. Stay tuned. Be right back. on the go all day every day subscribe to our youtube channel on tso nigeria space tv and join our online family on the go all day every day subscribe to our youtube channel on tso nigeria space tv and join our online family
to TSL Nigeria and get updates on the go all day every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel on TSL Nigeria Space TV and join our online family. Well, the judges are still compiling the results. This is the semi-finals, remember? Oh, the students are looking tense. Don't worry, calm down. You did well today, so fantastically well. Well, before the judges are, um, are done compiling the scores, I'd like to call on our observer for today, Reverend Olu Martin, to come and give us his address and his observation about the competition so far. Please a round of applause as I welcome him. Thank you, Madam Moderator and um, the TSL group for challenging these young people to be the best and to bring out their best. Uh, and let me, let me also thank the teachers who took our time because it was somebody that said the greatest leadership is the investment of your person in the life of another person. But more importantly, uh, the young girls, incidentally, no guys today. There was one last week, but I can understand. Uh, women seem to talk more than uh, men, so I can understand why we <laughs> That's on a lighter note. But, but I like your originality today. And I'll tell you a short story. A, a, a man, a woman was in a train with her 26-year-old boy. And as the train was moving, the boy would shout, Oh, mommy, look at the trees are going behind us. The trees, and is that not an obvious thing? The train was moving fast. After a while, the guy would get excited. Go, oh, look at the cloud. The cloud is following us everywhere. The cloud are moving fast. And some of the people in the train got a little bit irritated and said, How can a 26 year old boy be talking like this now? Is this guy in a mumu or what? And one of them tapped the lady and said, ah, I mean, why didn't you teach your, why is your child behaving like this now? And the woman laughed and said, my child was born blind. We are just coming from the hospital where an operation was performed on him. So this is the first time he's seen in 26 years. So you can, so, and pass, everybody's perception changed. The boy didn't care what everybody was saying in the train. For him, he was seeing things the way he was seeing them for the first time. And that talks about originality. And I think all of you were original. The topic was a little bit more technical than the topic of last week about Godfatherism. Eve voting because it required some technical use of terms and all of that. But I think all of you killed it. Your English was good. Your comportment was good. Your, your you know, semantics was good. And the only thing that I can say is that I'm tempted to end by saying that indeed what a woman, what a man can do a woman can do no I, I will say what a man can do a woman can do mm -mm. so you can that, that, mm -mm, that is depending on where side you divide whether it is better or also depends on where you are but it's a good one and if there is a heaven after the skies I think that's where all of you are going to however don't be distracted they say charity must begin at home but she must not also end up in the hotel because sometimes we talk about where charity begins, we don't talk about where charity is going to. You need to keep your focus where you are going to. For you to have been selected in the midst of all of your students, even if you came last today, it means that in the midst of every other person in your school, you were the best. Believe in yourself. Because if your country doesn't believe in you, you can succeed. Your parents don't believe in you, you can succeed. Your teachers don't believe in you, you can succeed. But if you don't believe in you, no matter how much is spent on you, no matter the school they take you to within or outside the country, you will not succeed. You are the best you that can be. Anybody fatter than you is too fat, thinner than you is too thin, fairer than you is too fair, darker than you is too dark. You are the best. You are the most beautiful. If anybody thinks otherwise, let him look at his mirror and ask himself. But for you, your mirror tells you exactly what you see in the mirror. Keep it up. Next week, we'll be here again so that we can crown the best of the school. But so far, it's beautiful. Mrs. Moderator, thank you. 
an amazing address from Reverend Leo Olu Martin, an amazing one. A round of applause, please. And that story was so deep. Well, oh, the moment of truth is here. The results are ready. Now I'd like to call on our moderator for today, Miss Joyce Chooks, to come and announce the scores to us. A round of applause as she comes in. Hi. You guys were amazing. I'm just, I'm just happy that I'm not one of the judges. I can imagine the problem having to collate this result. Everybody was exceedingly fantastic. All right, so judges, do we have our results ready for me? Hmm. No problem. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So the first school that we are starting is going to be returning to next week, Friday, for the finale. Hmm. Wow. The scores are immaculate. I think this is the highest that we've had so far in this competition. All right, so the first school coming out first with the highest score that will certainly be returning. Hmm. Hmm. Come and see if you're seeing this thing with me. You're seeing it, Abi? You see, you see, right? Okay. Okay, so with a thunderous round of applause, let's give it up for our first school, Ito and Girls Grammar School, scoring a whooping sum of 352. Wow. So we'll be happy to see you next week, Friday, for the finale. And uh, following closely, hmm, is it it's correct, right? Okay, okay. Following closely at second position, the second school that we will definitely be seeing at the finale, we have New Era Secondary School with a whooping 300 points. And now, the last school that will definitely be joining us in the finale on Friday. Hmm. Do you want to give your opinion or do you want me to continue? <laughs> okay, we'd just like to say that first of all, everybody did fantastic. It was amazing how much information you guys could cram into such a small amount of time. You were intentionally articulate with your points. And right now, I don't even know if I want e voting or I don't want e voting. I'm confused. Either way, everybody is a winner, and making it this far into the competition is a milestone on its own. So, the third school that will definitely be joining us next week with 282 points is... Hmm. This name is hard to pronounce. Are you seeing it? Hmm. The last school that is definitely going to be joining us next week, Friday, is... Hmm. By the way, I hope you guys saw the breakfast show this morning. It was, it was really exciting. Yeah, we had a wonderful yeah, conversation. Yeah, this is why this e voting team won't work. <laughs> All right, so the last school that will definitely be joining us with 282 points, do it marvelously well. Give a round of applause for EDIA College. <laughs> and uh, are there any last words? <laughs> okay, so before, okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thin, uh, I'll just say, first of all, you all did very, very well. I would, I would address... I'll start with the one that's not going to be with us next week. You guys did very, very well. That's Idia College. I got that correct. Uh, Anglican Girls Grammar School is the one not going to be with us. Oh, okay, Idia College is with us. Fantastic. So good. Anglican Girls, you also did very well. I've also f I've been following all uh, you from the very first day you've been debating. So you doing you did very, very well. All you just need to do is it's an experience for you to move to the next level. You just have to keep it up and trust me you're gonna go places okay i wish you the very best all of you and looking forward to seeing you uh on is next week friday yes, that's the grand finale and yeah looking forward to seeing you then bye-bye
Thank you so much. And of course, for the sake of clarity, I'm going to remind you of the criteria with which our judges judge these amazingly brilliant leaders. First of all, we judge on organization and clarity, which means how organized the speaker was and how clearly their points were articulated and stated in a way that both their opponents, the judges, and everyone listening will get a clear case of what is being spoken. They're also judged on their use of arguments. How did they use their arguments? How did they use their points? How did they portray what they were about to say? Also, there was the use of examples and facts, which I would say that our ladies, our baby girls did exceedingly well. There's also the use of rebuttal, picking up something that your opponent said and then dwelling on it. It was amazing. And uh, finally, there was presentation style and appearance. Our judges judged our girls on this five points. Organization and clarity, use of argument, use of examples and facts, use of rebuttal, and finally, presentation style and appearance. Now, there's going to be a wonderful twist for the finale of the show. The finale is going to be next week Friday and something special is going to happen. Now, what's going to happen in the finale is that each school will have two speakers so far in the competition we've only had one speaker from each school but we're twisting a little bit we want to make sure that our ladies battle it out and everybody's giving enough time and resources to buttress their points and show that indeed they present the best school in the competition so yes two speakers hope you guys are ready it's one girl she's really the only one coming and coming and coming so you're gonna have a backup finally hopefully she's as amazing as you are and on that note we're gonna call uh we're going to call it a day on our conversation for today. Tomorrow, I want you guys to join us on our one-on-one -on -one with our amazing host, Mr. Kerem Modukbe. We're going to have Honorable Chris, or Kai Ben, in the studio, and he'll be discussing the electricity theft bill which the Edo State House Assembly, I beg your pardon, just passed into law. So if you're unsure of what that bill curtails, make sure you tune in by 10 a.m. tomorrow, Saturday, and catch our one-on-one -on -one interview hosted by Mr. Kerem Mudukbe. Thank you so much for joining us. Have yourself a lovely day and a lovely weekend ahead. Good morning.